The Celtics Talk Podcast is presented by 24autogroup.com, 11 locations across New England. What's up, everybody? Post-game pod coming to you. After game three, Celtics take down the Miami Heat, 104-84. Jaws, we're flipping the script. I love it. Usually you are the one that has to ask me questions, and I try to give poignant responses. But now I'm going to make you do all the work tonight. So let's start. What's your big takeaway from the Celtics dusting themselves off and rebounding in game three? This shouldn't be my big takeaway, but I am so sick of the Miami Heat. (laughs) I don't know what it is. Like, tonight was just the night where I was finally like, oh, my God, sick of this team because Miami just – and give them credit. And I give them credit, and I give Eric Spolster credit that no matter who's on the floor, they find a way – to try to get under your skin. They find a way to make adjustments, to make the game difficult. And I, I, Josh, I didn't even know Patty Mills was still in the league. Yeah. And they were like, let's send him in and just maybe he'll flop twice and get under your skin a little bit. Yeah, and it's, so again, it's just like, I think it just comes with seeing this team for the fourth time in five years. And you know, you heard what Jimmy Butler had to say during the game as well about, you know, he's sick of seeing the Celtics and Boston get all Come the praise on. as well. It's just, I, I think that's what happens when two teams match up as much as these two teams have. But, uh, as far as the, the game on the floor, mm. I thought in particular it was the pace in which they played in the second quarter when they scored 40-plus points Ooh. in that second quarter. Like that, That's what I really was looking to see because they had slowed things down so much yep. in game two to go matchup-driven, to try to find that matchup, hunt that out. I was glad to see them really get out in transition, but play fast in that second quarter. It was ugly to start this game. I mean, the Heat had, what, 12 points in the first quarter, and even the Celtics weren't clicking offensively it felt like it was a little bit of a rock fight but that was to me that was the physicality going up the Celtics being more defensive minded putting all their energy into that side of the basketball then they just sort of rolled in the bench group and that Sam Payton Al Drew and Tatum lineup I think it was plus 15 in 11 minutes and I think it was their most successful lineup and I just thought that group was great the bench was great in game one, showed that part of why you're best better than this Miami Heat team is because you can lean on that depth. And then I felt like in game two, obviously, Pritchard was out there for 20 minutes and barely dented the box score. Refreshing to see on the road when role players typically play worse, that trio, you know, it's a little weird to call Al a role player, but like so much more encouraging that those guys were able to go out there and really that dominant set second quarter just sort of put you on cruise control for the rest of the night. It's also the Jays have been good in this series just in general. They were actually really mm-hmm. good in game two as well. They just didn't get any help. And then tonight yeah. you just like it's not just that, that group that you, you brought up. but Right. Porzingis, Porzingis had his worst game. Yeah. Derek White. But then they, they had bounce back games tonight. Mm-hmm. You know, and Derek White really did a lot of it in the final five minutes of the second quarter. Right. But they need the supporting cast when it comes to the, the, the Jays played so mm-hmm. well and they still almost won that game with Miami shooting over 50% from three. But if the supporting cast steps up the way and just contributes the way we've seen them do all season, this is what you're going to get it's, it's 20 point wins where you're actually up by 30 and it ends up by 20. So uh, another thing about that bench group was that uh, they got into a little, I mean, dust up seems a little too much for what it was, but uh, Tyler Hero did not appreciate going to the ground with Sam Hauser at one point, maybe thought he was pushed, kind of threw the basketball at him. And in the Celtics' new typical format, Sam Hauser removes himself from the situation because he was probably like, what the hell is he upset about anyway? Yeah. And then Peyton Pritchard goes and stalks after Tyler Hero. And I think they were like saying, let's go meet in the back later. I love this. I love that. I mean, one, I love that it's Peyton is the sort of the enforcer who wants the smoke. And I love that they're just not taking any bull. Like, they know that that's what Miami's trying to do. And it doesn't get to a point where it's counterproductive for the team. I think only Hero got attack. Uh, but, like, I like that they're approaching it with some fire. I, yes. And as long as they're being, like, true to who they are. Mm. So if that's, you know, if that's not like Sam Hauser to just get back up in his face, then great. And, and then Payne Pritchard, if that's who you are, great. Love mm. that, too. So they, they do need to – and Eddie and Scal have talked about this as well, just about how, you know, there's this perception that the Celtics aren't going to bite mm-hmm. back in these situations. So You can say it. People think they're soft. Okay. Well, I think that maybe they're hearing that as well. Maybe that's why you're seeing some of it. I like that. I like that they, they take that personally. I mean, I know their coach doesn't want to hear that, that he's the first guy who's ready to jump in there and, and throw hands. So uh, I like that this team has handled two situations now where things have kind of gone up a level. And, and kept their poise and, 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 and approached it the right way. Like I said, then Patty Mills comes in in the fourth quarter, and I'm like, 
I thought he was I hated board. that play, by the way, where the, the Jalen like, Brown just like yes. slowly is like trying to move his arm, and Patty Mills just like goes diving to the floor. Um, but again, that that's like Miami trying to get what under your skin. What happens to flopping penalties in the league? Why don't, why don't, weren't we calling these before? And now all of a sudden they've just disappeared. Uh, but yeah, that's Bolster saying, you know, just need something right now to get back in a 22-point deficit or whatever it was at that point. And you're throwing darts, especially on the night you don't have uh, DeLon Wright. And, you know, just it, it, everything is sort of conspiring against their depth. So let, let, let's flip it this way. Okay. Because, like, this, I feel like this one's pretty cut and dry. It's not like a very sexy game. It's just Celtics came in, did their thing, and now I think the, all the attention shifts to game four, which the best part is we don't have to wait eight years for, this, for the game four now, Monday night here on NBC Sports Boston. What did the, what did the Heat do? Like, how did the Heat get back into the series? They got to go back to chucking it, chucking a bunch of threes and making a bunch of threes. Because what do they – the other wild thing about tonight was the Celtics didn't even shoot 30% from three. Really? Like, they had a bad shooting. I think they were 11 to 37. Do I have that I'll right? Be, you're right, 11 to 37. Okay, so the Celtics yeah. shot poorly from three. And still I would love to know the number, points. like what, what the record is when they shoot less than 30%. Like, they, they obviously dominate whenever they're above, like, 33%, I think yeah. it is. But, like, below 30. That... They're, they're dominant when they, like, make 16 or more especially. Right. But – uh, they shot the ball. Celtics did relatively poorly tonight and still won this game. So Miami's, they have to shoot better than 50% from three. They got to make like 23 threes. Like, again, think about that, how they did it in game two. The recipe was to make a bunch of threes yep. at a very high clip and also somehow hope that every other Celtic other than Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown doesn't really do anything. It's a tough roadmap. Uh, and I'm with you, right? Like, it, it feels like – it. It never felt as sustainable in the moment, but because we have PTSD from last season, it's always a worry, like, man, could they get hot for another two-week stretch? Could the Celtics well, have? Let me ask you this. Even in the third quarter, did you start to get, like, what are we doing here a little I, so bit? I definitely got, because, it, it, again, we're prisoners of the moment. I did have that, oh, my God, well, like, how, how are we letting go of the rope again? And I thought they were a little bit quicker to catch themselves. You would, you would have a stretch where it got rocky, and then Jalen would make a layup, or Chris Stops would do something. Great job by Kristaps kind of bouncing back and setting a tone early and handling the physicality better. But, yeah, I think there's just going to be moments throughout these playoffs where we're why, – why can't they stay locked in? Why can't they stay focused? Now, they were out of the 48 tonight. You know, they were locked in for probably 40 of them as compared to the other night when it didn't feel like at any point they had a sustained stretch where it felt like they were willing to commit to being a great defensive team. And I just think – I hope – you know, I told you pregame – we can look back on game two and be like, okay, that was a, what we would call a good loss if they legitimately learned from it. And we're like, oh, yeah, let's not be stupid. Let's play good defense. Let's not give up a billion three-pointers, and we'll win the game. Let me ask you this real quick. And it, I don't know if it happens again or not. It's a good problem to have. But what do you want to see them do if they're up by 25 points and there's eight minutes to go? I know that it, within the broadcast, Scout was like, I don't want us doing this. Like yeah. playing super – like there were six minutes to go. Playing super slow and basically just taking a knee. It was like the football equivalent of, of taking a knee. What, what do you want to see them do? Because that is <laughs> – it's so you, it, you don't see it much in playoff series, yeah. which is why I, I don't know what the alternatives it, are. You know, it's funny, too, is like they pushed the lead back up at one point. They called timeout, and I go, oh, good, this is when Joe's going to sub. And they came back out of the timeout, and the starters were right back on the floor. And I'm thinking, what are we doing? Uh, I think in that instance, you need to trust your bench. You know, and like, look, maybe it'll get a little bit rocky. I think the natural inclination is Joe knows, like, you just want to get to the finish line of a win. Right. Yeah, you do have time between these games, maybe more so between one and two, and two to three than you will moving forward. But I just think you have the luxury of, you know, okay, this guy plays 38 minutes. Like, what was the most minutes? 38, 48 for Tatum. So, and everybody else was 34 or under. So, I feel pretty comfortable with that number. But I, I would just be like, you know what? O'Shea, Svi, go do your thing. Just don't mess this up. And as long as Peyton's out there and Sam's out there, I think you're pretty good. But, yeah, I'm with you. Like, the one fear I always have is, Jesus, just get Kristaps off the floor. Well, yeah. But I, and I will say my, my favorite play of the night was Jason Tatum working on Caleb Martin. Ooh. A little shimmy there. And then just on the turnaround. So, someone photoshopped him. A little bump him. in the face there. You know, like that one. It was like, okay, good. And, and, again, it was kind of in response to the physical play. And Jason Tatum not even acknowledging that it happened. Someone photoshopped. Uh, Caleb Martin on a twister board because he's so stretched out uh, coming off of that, which was fantastic. Um, I do enjoy it. Do you know Caleb Martin's final line? Two of four shooting, Two five points. Four? He took four shots. Four shots only. Minus 23. That's not good. Not good. Rough night. 
Caleb Martin, two of four, one of two beyond the three-point arc. Like he had a second half three-pointer. I vividly remember being like, oh, yeah, he's, he's out there tonight. 38 minutes of cardio. <laughs> um, you feeling better though, right? For sure. Let's end on that. Absolutely. I felt it, it was a good win. It was a good win. It's crazy. Like I, I'm, and I'm, look, I'm the poster child of riding the, the wave a little bit too much. Yeah, but I mean, like, and again, the Heat still did their best to junk it up. Mm. <laughs> That's why I'm kind of like, oh, man. It's just, you're kind of, we've seen it so much over the last five years. That, can, I, uh, can I tell you the one sneaky thing like, I'm worried about? What's that? Jimmy Butler's roaming around doing these interviews and stuff. Like, I, I don't think he's going to play in this series, but would it surprise you if he showed up for, like, game five in Boston? You know, but even if he does, right. they're still a better team. Mm. Even if he does, they're still a better team. What and if Terry Rozier comes walking out the tunnel? Fine. Thing? You know what? This, this Celtics team is good enough that the Heat, can bring, back, the Heat can bring back whoever they want. They can bring back Dwayne Wade, whoever they want. Okay. It doesn't matter. Wow. They're better than the Miami Heat. And I hope that does happen so they can go out and still win the game anyways. Mm. You know what I mean? They, and just and then they have like, no excuses, right? Exactly. Exactly. Do you want to talk about my lucky shirt? Your lucky shirt is phenomenal. It's got that Say by the Bell pattern for anyone that's listening to this. Like the, yeah, that's you, true. You saw, I, I guess you I, saw it like five. I always forget when we're in front of cameras that I need to actually explain myself. So if you're, if you're watching on YouTube or, you know, you have the luxury of, of watching me uh, pop up my suit jacket here. If you're not, uh, I have my Say by the Bell shirt on. Some call it, say it looks like a trapper keeper. Uh, do you want to know where I got this? Giles? I'm trying to remember, but you, I, it was... Uh, Ross Dress for Less, which for is you. like, you know, the, the uh, if TJ Maxx is the go-to in the New England area, yep. Ross Dress for Less gets, like, owns the rest of the nation. I think you can get some in New York and New Jersey now. Uh, I might need some loving fans. If you're in cities that have a Ross Dress for Less and you would like to go get me a, another hideous 90s shirt, otherwise I have to keep wearing this through the duration of the series, which I'm not opposed to. Yeah, I think you should keep it but, going. At uh, least At least when they're playing in Miami. At the very least. Fair. So Monday. It's also my little bit of a silent protest because I, like, I didn't get sent to Miami. Yeah, what happened there? Yeah, I'm a little hurt. Uh, I don't want to like, shouldn't throw my bosses under the bus. But okay. Yeah. Like, look, we have a, we have a crew down there. It was, <laughs> if you have to choose me or Gorman, like send Gorman. You know, I get it. They were also like, we can't just leave Giles in the studio by himself. True. Gonna... <laughs> Which, you know, I it's mean. getting lonely. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Anyone packed there? Or someone? enjoy, Someone's got to be here. I think we made the most of this. Uh, we made the most of this podcast. We made the most of our, our night in the studio. I got to slam the over button a little bit. Didn't do it on the podcast, but uh, this was a good experience. And uh, let's keep it going. Here's more from our postgame show. Look no further than the award-winning 24 Auto Group. With over 2,600 vehicles in stock, the brands you love. Backed by the savings and service you can count on. Visit today or shop online at 24autogroup.com. I thought it all started with their intensity and their intentionality, as Joe Mazzulla likes to say all the time. Everything they did was with was with purpose, was forceful, and it was with intent. And then the other thing, I, I talked about this game one. Like, let's not get involved in talking about the refs and bad calls or we're not getting these calls. And let's just play through it. And I didn't think that we talked too much to the refs today. I thought tonight, I thought that what they did was went out there, played physical basketball, Miami got extremely physical with them on the perimeter. We got just as physical with them. We didn't complain about anything. We just went out there, and we played like a team that was down 0-2 in a playoff game. Every shot that Miami took, I felt like, was extremely contested. Or, and we worked, we worked so hard on the defensive end, and that's why I feel like we were, we were able to build that lead because it started on the defensive end, and that's what's going to have to carry over for us to win this series and every series moving forward. Yeah, defensively, Miami had – 12 points in that first quarter. And then the, the 39 points they had in the first half were the fewest they've had in a half in any game this season, including the entire regular season, Eddie. So uh, what, what was it about the defense there in those first 24 minutes that set the tone and gave the Celtics such a large lead? Effort, number one, it was effort. Everybody being on the same page. Communication was on point. You could see that. Everybody was talking. And then just making sure that uh, whatever – the game plan was, and the game plan was, make sure we contest every single shot that they have. And if we have to make the extra rotation, I'm not mad with two guys running at the ball at one time. If we're, we're trying to run somebody off the three, and then if that ball is kicked, somebody running over to him, and it will scramble out of that. I just felt like this team, I, I just felt like they were really engaged today. All right, so again, 104-84, to 84, uh, your final score down in Miami and uh, you saw Jason Tatum go for 22 points. Jalen Brown also had 22. Celtics had four guys in double figures. Porzingis with 18. Nice bounce back game for him. 
and uh, 16 as well for Derek White. And you also got some nice contributions from the bench as well. But uh, the Celtics, uh, in a game where they, you know, were 11 of 37 from three. So, by far, I mean, that's their worst three-point shooting uh, night of this series. Yet they're able to win this game uh, with ease as uh, they're able to get it done in other areas, Eddie. And, you know, you look at it. 39 of 82 from uh, from the field just in general. You saw Jason Tatum kind of take over there. What did you think about his game, especially down the stretch? I thought he had a, a, another phenomenal floor game. Uh, you, you look at the numbers he put up, he almost messed around and had another triple-double. He, did, he didn't uh, blow up the scoreboard with his points, but everything else he did. He rebounded the basketball, had 11 rebounds. He made all the right plays. Um, he didn't ha- – and number – and this is the, 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 the biggest key – he has the ball in his hands a lot and is either going to score or try to make a play for himself or make plays for others. He has zero turnovers. So he took care of the basketball. I think the team took care of the basketball at, uh, relatively well to, to, uh, in this game today. And so w- what I look at is that Jason Tatum is understanding that I don't have to go out and get 50 points for us to win. If that's what the game dictates, then I feel like he goes out there and he's able to do that. But the game dictated him to play – the way that he played. And I think it starts on the defensive end. You don't have that much pressure on you. If you're able to build a lead, it all starts with defense. And, and, and I'll never waver on that. I think this team, when they're locked in defensively, they're able to play with pace, number one. And if they want to play a slowdown game once they get up and just say, hey, you know what, we don't have to rush. We can play through Porzingis or JT. They have the ability to do that. But it all starts with the defense. When that team is engaged like that, they were handsy. They got deflections. They were uh, contesting shots, fighting over screens. I, I, I'm not even mad at the little uh, scuffle between Sam Hauser uh, when, he, when he fouled uh, Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero threw the ball. I like that because the Heat have been the big bad bullies against us. No, no, no. It's not going to happen no more. You know, at some point you got to draw the line in the sand. And I think they drew it to, to in this game. Yeah, and you saw Jason Tatum, too, that little bump on that turnaround right into Caleb Martin, too. It was a nice little moment there. All right, meanwhile, send it back down to South Beach. Uh, Abby Chin's got Jalen Brown. Jalen, the last time you spoke with us, you were determined to prevent against a repeat performance in game two. What did you think about the way you guys came out and took control today? I think we came out and did what we were supposed to do. We executed on defense. Um, still think we could play better on offense, but I thought we did a good job tonight. How much did you put on your shoulders to match the physicality of the Heat? Just really just get on that glass. I mean, that's been a challenge. Make sure we get on the rebounds, offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds. You know, that's where the game is won and lost. So um, that's the challenge right there. How important was it to get the big fella and Kristaps Porzingis going early? Yeah, very important to get him going. You know, he's a key component of our team. They want to switch, and tonight he took advantage of his matchup. So big reason why we got the win tonight. What kind of lift did Peyton provide off the bench? Peyton's a dog, man. He came in, got great energy plays, uh, made timely baskets, and just, you know, space the floor for So Peyton's been doing what he's been doing all year long. No expectations, but what positives do you take from this one into game four? Um, we executed. I still think we could play a lot better. We're still getting, you know, a feel for the playoffs together with this unit. Um, so we should look forward to, to maximize next game. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, thanks so much, Abby. All right, let's bring in Scal now. And Scal, when you take a look at this game and Celtics getting the uh, the 20 point win, then in Miami, what did you like most about the adjustments they made from uh, Game Two? I mean, the adjustments are simply they were in the airspace of Miami more. I thought they their pickup points were way higher. They were way more physical. Yep. Um, I, I just think like those small things uh, really panned out offensively. We didn't force anything. You didn't say, like, okay, I have a matchup and I have to shoot. The ball went inside out a lot. Thought we drove the ball and made the right play. And and I'm going to be honest, Miami played really tough defense today. They were a really handsy group, and they contested almost every single one of our shots. But I think our game plan going in, our patience, our poise, and I thought if, like, to, if you can just watch Peyton Pritchard from the moment he checked in and how the game defensively just went to a different level, I think that that was a huge moment for us. Yeah, I thought really it was it, it all starts with our defense, man. We're not able to play with pace if we're taking the ball out the net and allowing a team to set up. Either they want to kind of run a, a, a token press and then get into a, a zone or, or if, whatever it is, they're able to set their defense. You know, it's no cross matches. But when we're able to, to get stops, we're able to get out in the open court 
And it doesn't necessarily mean that we're looking for fast break points. But what it does is that we're initiating our offense early on. They're, the pickup points are a little deeper instead of being – we're on our heels way back towards half court for the, uh, the opposing team's pickup points. It's totally different. We're getting to our spot to where we want to initiate – our offense. And I think that that's what the difference was in this game. We were more physical. We were more aggressive. And, you know, sometimes when, you know, the bullies, you got to bully the bully. And I felt like we did that at times. You know, they still were handsy and got away with things. But I like the scrum, Scal. I don't know about you. You were right. You, you were there. So, like, the energy in the building when Tyler Hero threw the ball to Sam Hauser. I wasn't mad at what Sam did. I mean, I know it wasn't intentional but it, it was just one of those physical plays and then Peyton getting in Tyler Hero's face and then that lingering on I like stuff like that because it's throwing up we're not backing down we're not going back down from you right here that's okay yep I got beat I pushed you all right now you want to do this now everybody else coming to our to my defense now we talking well we because yeah you know this the word on the Celtics have been that you could punk them if you get physical with them if you change that narrative as the Boston Celtics, there is nothing that any team in this league can do with you if you change that narrative. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that is, when, you know, we talked to me and Eddie, talked to guys around the league. If the Celtics do have a weakness that they think it is, it's that. Like, you can get under their skin, you can push them around, you can punk them. But I like the way that this team has responded since since that. Yep. Remember that incident in game one? Like, that's, they, they respond really well. And I thought that uh, – I, I just thought today our, our defense was physical, it was poised. And, and if, we're, if we're doing that and we're sharing the ball, we're taking care of the ball, we're going to be fine. Did you wonder whether you guys, your guy, you guys would bring it, like, or were you convinced yesterday or before the game? Okay, this is it's going to be different. Uh, I mean, I trust our team. I mean, I'm, I don't expect them to play perfect, and I don't expect series to to be easy or to go a certain way. But I trust them, and I know they want to win, and I know they uh, they'll do whatever it takes. And I trust their preparation, and I trust who they are. So I, more than that, it's kind of like just play the game, you know. So I'm glad we don't have two days before the next one. Jalen. Uh, you say it mindset. What is the principal difference between last year mindset and this year? Thank you. Um, last year is last year. You know, now we're we're here and we're in 2024. We got a new team, and we learn from our experiences. You know, um, um, and and now is the time to show it. The whole world is watching. So, um, I think we're excited. You know, we're excited to brace every step of the journey, and just taking it one game at a time. Jen, you mentioned like no dare shots. You mentioned these are all NBA players who you know can make open shots. What was the process like over these couple of days where you guys decided there would be kind of a little bit of a, a change in scheme and, and kind of the agreement that this is what this game needed from you guys? Yeah, I mean, I think it's good. You know, on any given night, you know, you know, teams can come out and hit a plethora of shots. You know, they had a record-breaking night um, the other day, but you know, we don't panic. Um, we watched the film, we broke it down, seeing where we can make some improvements, and we come out and we execute. And I thought that's what we did tonight. Um, but it, it calls for that. You know, everything ain't going to go and be perfect. We just got to make sure that we stay together and um, we keep learning from our mistakes in real time and, and executing down the stretch. How did you feel you know, after that last game? Obviously, it was probably one of your worst games with the Celtics yeah. so far. To bounce back the way you did, yeah. what did you feel over the last couple of days and how that kind of set you up for tonight? Oh, man, it was a long two days, you know? Uh, just to... Um, the way it burns inside, you know, after a game like that, after a loss like that, and, and me not having, probably having my worst game as a, as a Celtic, you know, it's, it really burned inside. I, I, I'm not gonna lie. So, I was long two days until I get another opportunity and and uh, I made some adjustments and and I yeah, didn't fall too much into their game of you know this just physical like like all the time and that's what they want me to do. So, a little bit different and um, then yeah, completely different game today. Jason, they they missed a lot of the, mo the momentum shots that they were getting in game two, um, stringing a run together. What was it that kind of prevented that? Was it something like when you let a team get comfortable, they start to hit those, and, and you didn't let them get comfortable? What, what went into that? Yeah, like you said, uh, I think our attention to detail and um, on the defensive end of the day was a lot better than the last game. And... Um, Tried our best, right, to just not let let them get comfortable, get in the rhythm, 
Um, they're going to make shots, but uh, just try to make it as tough as you can, as often as you can. Yeah, Jason, defensively, and Joe said there weren't many adjustments. Was it just a matter of picking up the intensity and, and taking pride in guarding your yard? Yeah, giving up offensive rebounds and, um, you know, closeouts. We could have had some better closeouts um, in, in game two where they just, you know, we kind of gave up some walk-up threes and things like that. Um, just better at contesting. Uh, it was, a, you know, kind of an effort thing.